we welcome you back inside the U.S. Air Arena out in Landover, Maryland, suburban territory for the Panthers and the Hoyas. Pitt comes in at nine and nine. They're just one and five on the road, and they'll start Cummings and Taylor in the backcourt. Jason Nail, excellent three-point shooter. Mark Blunt, big-time shot blocker, and Varga back from injuries. He could be an emerging force for Ralph Willard. In his third year, his first two Pitt teams winning only 10 games, and today his club with a chance at win number 10. Freshman Ed Sheffy at the point. Page with back-to-back 30-plus -back point games. White, their big-time center, looking to emerge for the dean of Big East coaches, John Thompson. His club trying to get things back in gear so they could return to the NCAA tournament. And here's your series history. Panthers just 1-11. Lone win coming back in 91. Pitt winning the only meeting a year ago at the Civic Arena in Pittsburgh. Tim Higgins, Rusty Herring, and Jim Haney are officiating crew. And we should have a very competitive matinee game here in the Big East today. Williams come out man to man. This is Vontigo Cummings. Three-point specialist Jason Mayo and the push on Victor Page, a man the Hoyas cannot afford to get him in foul trouble. You know, Victor's had a problem with that this year. He has gotten in foul trouble early in a lot of Big East games, so he's going to have to temper some of that aggressiveness and apply it offensively. Pretty good matchup right here, Page on Cummings. Oh, it sure is. They're a talented sophomore. Kubakar Al, he's uh, the designated defender for Georgetown. He's on Mayo, who comes inside. Varga knocks down the jumper. Chad Varga, averaging eight a game, puts Pitt on the board first. Oh, terrific play to try to get Mayo the ball, and he made a great pass. Well, both these clubs, big steal teams. Cummings dunks it home. Well, this is where their offense really starts, and that's with a great defense. Already they've got a steal. Is a club that ranks third in the Steel's pit, right behind Georgetown, that ranks first in the league. Now the Hoyas trying to push it against that full court pressure, and the foul is on Von Tico Cummings. Both teams really like to get out and play man to man. That, of course, been the philosophy for John Thompson for all those years, and Ralph Willard in his third year at Pitt, applying the good pressure defense. They haven't had a lot of luck with injuries over the years, but now with this great freshman class they've signed, things are starting to look up for Pittsburgh. Victor Page, first of two. Georgetown is a very poor foul shooting team, 57% as a ball club. Just can't explain that, Eric. It's really difficult for me to imagine a team in major college basketball shooting that poorly from the line. Now Georgetown comes with their full court pressure. Both these clubs right at the top of the Big East standings in turnover margin. They both are high volume steal and turnover creating teams. And both of these teams have struggled offensively. So they're applying the defense, trying to win games with defense. But you get a, in a lot of problems if you can't score more than 60 points a game. Open look for Varga. He's knocked down two short range jumpers. Chad Varga back from that stress fracture injury. Uh, Help Pitt get off to a slow start, but he's rounding into form. Well, we spoke to assistant coach Bobby Jones about Chad Vargan. He says he's finally feeling as good as he has all season long. Pretty indicative of hitting his first two shots. Ubacart now on the drive, and he is fouled by the shot blocker, Mark Blount. Second team foul on Pittsburgh. This is what John Thompson's trying to get from his wing players, particularly Bubakar. Oh, he's not a good standing shooter, so take it to the basket. And he went by three Pitt Panthers to get that shot up. Of course, he paid the price as he got hammered into the sideline. There is Bubakar, a second-year starter. A chest-to-chest -chest defender. He's a perfect John Thompson-type defender, relentless at that end of the court. Such a versatile player, too. He can guard a, a smaller guard. He can go out and guard a big man. Just a terrific defender. Just a 58% free throw shooter, but he knocks both down. All three Georgetown points from the line as freshman Kelly Taylor comes streaking into the front court. Varga from the top, missing the three. And Jahidi oh, White got away ball. with the travel, lost the ball. Blount going up strong and scoring. Mark Blount. Well, I'll tell you, Pittsburgh is out hustling the Hoyas that time underneath their own basket. Well, the Panthers up 8-3. Bubakar Al will turn it back. 
We've played just over two minutes. Very good start on the road for the Panthers, and that is an offensive foul. Mark Blount, the shot blocker, could have been his second, but he beat Al to the spot. Well, see, that's what Bubakar's trying to do. We mentioned how he wants to take the ball to the basket. He's not going to hit you with a jumper, and it was a good scouting report early by Ralph Willard. Take the charge on Bubakar. Here comes Vontigo Cummings. The sophomore to Thompson, Georgia. Jason Mayo. And Blount threw it away. Taylor, poor decision to save it back to Page, who lost it out of bounds, but last touch by Jason Mayo, a deflection from behind. Well, Jason Mayo, great hustle by him. They lost the ball, but he did not quit. This is something you love to see. Look at him coming from behind and knock that ball away, because Victor Page was measuring up his man for the big dunk. Ed Sheffy comes out. Joe Tuomu comes back for the first time today. Tuomu, a sophomore point guard. He has only scored two points all year, but he comes in to play defense and gives John Thompson a chance to chat with his freshman floor general. Turnover on the Hoyas. Here comes Kelly Taylor, a man who is back from back surgery a year ago. Two herniated discs for Taylor, who's come up with a very solid year. White with a rebound. And here comes Victor Page on the spin. And Mark Blount with a rebound. This is Taylor right at Yaya Ja for the reverse. Boy, did a great job. And he had a right handed layup instead, went with the reverse and really threw off a terrific defender and shot blocker. That was an outstanding play. Kevin, this is a very impressive road start for Pitt. They'd lost two in a row, but they're up seven right. Oh, thunder dunk for the 270-pound junior from St. Louis. Get out of his way. Don't even contest that one. He'll break a hand. Steal by Al. Here comes Bubakar. Nice move. And he will go to the foul line. Vontigo Cummings, who had lost his footing, tripped up Bubakar Al. And that's the second foul on Cummings. After that basket, they were able to set up their defense, and Bubakar got the steal. Gets caught up there on the body. Good call, and Bubakar will get two free throws. Jahidi White comes out for Georgetown, and Shamel Jones, a freshman from Brooklyn, is on. And there's the coach's son, Kevin Willard, and he will sit Cummings down. That's a bad break for Pitt. Antigo goes to the bench with two points and two fouls. Yeah, when Kevin Willard comes in the game, they're a lot smaller, and they won't run and do as much pressing when he's in the game. But Willard does run the offense as well as any of the players on Pittsburgh. Yaya Jha to the bench. Another young player for Georgetown is in. Jameel Watkins, a 6'10 sophomore out of Brooklyn. It was Georgetown club, Kevin, all too often this year. As Victor Page scores and goes, so goes Georgetown. They need to develop a little more diversity in the offense. Well, they're very predictable. You know Victor Page is going to light it up anytime he can. Who else on Georgetown has got any kind of offense? It has really been evident so far this year. They're a struggling team that doesn't shoot the ball well. Boyers have lost three of their last four. They are 11 and six on the year. It's coming off their 29 win season a year ago. They went perfect at home. That's an NBA three. Oh, Kelly Taylor knocks it down. Oh, that, that shot was huge as Joseph Tuomo was in his face and he still was able to get it up. And he's just a 23% shooter from downtown. Willard, oh, over and back. Tough break for the Panthers. Oh, Kevin I... Willard had the steal. Now Tim Higgins coming over to talk it over with Rusty Herring. That is not an over and back. That's a terrible call because there was no possession. That ball was loose in the air when he threw it away. And we've got our first break in the action. We've played just over four minutes. Good road start for the Panthers. The newest Infinity is as luxurious as any Infinity ever made. Except it has more attitude. The new QX4. Big East Basketball on Sports Channel is brought to you by Manchester Equipment Company, your authorized Toshiba computer dealer. I think real estate would be highly lucrative. Now there's a computer that puts you in touch with the world like never before. 
door for one. At the touch of a button, you get TV, FM stereo, even a digital answering machine. Hey, Doug, this is Donald Trump. Just got your email. The Toshiba Infinia with the Intel Pentium processor. When you're ready for a different computer. Meineke keeps cars of all ages running like new. Muffler, brakes, shocks, and struts. High-quality parts and service at a reasonable price. Too bad they can't do anything about this 1949 classic. At Meineke, you're not going to pay a lot, but you'll get a lot. I guarantee it. Welcome back to U.S. Air Arena. Pittsburgh off to the good start. They've knocked in six of their first eight shots. Well, watch this play. This is a bad break. The ball got tipped. Now in midair, Willard throws it back. Now, if he had control of the ball, that would have been over and back. But instead, that was a loose ball. He caught it in midair, went from one half to the other. That should have been a, that was a bad break. Oh, he can do that. If he did not have the ball before, the possession doesn't change for the team. Come on, penalize the defense. Yeah, Tim Higgins coming yeah. over for a little explanation and they do reverse the call. So this Good. three man crew working well together. Well, I'm really glad they changed that call because that was a tough break. That would have been two points if they don't get however. Chad Fargo with the hook and another pit. Wow. Hit. I'm going to tell you something. This Chad Berger at 6'6", 230 pounds. I mean, he is muscular. And that's exactly what they need. Pitt's got the guard play. They need some inside scoring. And he's providing it. That is just a terrific move. He's already got six points. Two um jumpers. And here are the power move against a very tough front line at Georgetown. Jameel Watkins with a foul. Chad Varger suffered a stress fracture just above his ankle on the first day of Pitt's practice. He missed their first six games. One of the big reasons the Panthers got off very slowly, losing five of their first six games. Well, I think that's real encouraging for Pittsburgh. If they can get healthy, especially this time of year, February. They were 0 for February last year, losing 9 of 10 games. They just sputtered all the way through at the end of the season. Not this year. I look for this team to really pick it up. Panthers go to their 1-3-1 one, one zone. Yaya Sha with a swinging hook. And we get a foul on the rebound. And it's going to be a push on Jason Mayo. Jason Mayo, the veteran for the Panthers, the senior playing in his 97th game for Pitt today. I'll tell you, this is another tough call going against Pittsburgh. They did a great job defensively. They collapsed. They got the rebound. And then they call the foul. There were four blue shirts, one white shirt, and Mayo gets a foul call. Damon Jackson has just checked in for Georgetown, the sophomore of Alexandria, Virginia. And he's the man that gets free for the inbounds. 15-20 left in the first half. It's been all pit. They lead it 16-5. And the Panthers, a club that have struggled with their offense, they rank next to last in the Big East in scoring and field goal percentage on the year under 40%. But on the day, they've made seven of their first nine shots. Well, that's something come on the road, coming out that hot. They have a lot of confidence. And now the 2-3 zone is really frustrating the Hoyas. A lot of Big East teams are going into this. Victor type of Page, the left-hander, still looking for his first field goal. Just one point for the Big East top scorer here in our first six minutes. What the, he's a marked man. John Thompson really doesn't have anybody else to score. It's Victor looking to shoot almost every opportunity. Damon Jackson stripped by Kelly Taylor. Taylor leads all Big East players in steals. And the 6 3 guard up the ladder for the rebound. Boy, about this guy's comeback from back surgery last year. Amazing. It really is. Jason Mayo has the triple rim out. Jahidi White, nice lead for the freshman long. And he is fouled. And Georgetown looking to strike in transition. And the freshman, Shernard Long, will go to the line. Well, this is impressive play by Jahidi White. He got the rebound, immediately peeled out, made the long bullet pass that enabled the advantage for Long against the two defenders. Pittsburgh's got to get back on defense because you can see right now the Hoyas want to run. And to Jarrett Lockhart, you just got to look at him, a freshman from the Bronx, New York. Shernard Long, a promising freshman for Georgetown. Struggled in conference play, shooting just 24% from the field. Yeah, his minutes has been dwindling ever since that's happened. Uh, it's frustrating. He had a very good start to the season. Had a career-high 17 points game, his first outing. Now the bricks are starting to get tossed up at the Georgetown foul stripe. They are just three of eight here in the first half, and they still trail by 11. 
Gerald Jordan in the game for Pitt, number 14 in the post. Jordan, a senior out of Philadelphia, having a pretty good year since coming back from his injury. Kevin Willard, the coach's son. Oh. Nice pass. Oh, and boy. Gerald Jordan lays it in. Only a coach's son can make a play like that because he had his mind made up. He was going to get an assist. Beautiful pass. 13-point lead for Pittsburgh, their biggest so far in this game. Is looking for offense. Victor Page tries the triple. Gerald Jordan with a rebound. So Page not finding much success. He's missed his first three shots. Well, that's trouble for the Hoyas if he can't start scoring. Lockhart out of the corner and Page with a rebound. Don't worry about Victor. He'll keep firing. Averages 24 shots a game. What a defensive play by Jared Lockhart. Just spectacular. Willard for three. And Gerald Jordan runs down the rebound. This is Jordan. Two more for Pittsburgh. And they have taken a 15-point lead. And John Thompson needs to circle the wagons. He takes a 20-second timeout. It's 20-5. to five. The visitors with 13-14 left in the first half. But Pittsburgh gets totally outplaying Georgetown. It starts with their defense. We said that all along. And here the rebound, and then a beautiful pass to Jordan. Chad Varga having a great first half. He's got six points, three boards, and the assist. That was just spectacular. Jordan's got a nice touch. Look at the spirit. These guys are fired up. Well, after the slow start, uh, winning just one of their first six, as you look at the shooting numbers, this is a club that's gone eight and four since. Some of their good wins, they beat Connecticut back in December, beat Michigan in the Rainbow Classic, and a win that looks better all the time, a four-pointer two weeks ago at home against the surging Miami Hurricane. You're exactly right. Exactly right. They are playing some ball. Well, Pittsburgh has really come in fired up. That was Andre Howard, the sophomore of Philadelphia, that knocked the ball away. Howard, a guy that has started eight games this year for Pitt. They keep waiting for that sophomore to emerge. Boy, this 10-0 run. It, it is. It's been the defense. I mean, just six field goal attempts by Georgetown. We played almost seven minutes. It's incredible. Might be tough for the Hoyas to come back. This is a club that is uh, shooting the worst field goal percentage in the Big East on the year, under 39% from the field. Well, they're going to have to put a, a spurt themselves together, and they don't want to dig a hole any larger than the 15 points they've already put themselves in. Now Thompson using a lot of men. He comes back with Shenard Long, and Damon Jackson leaves the game. And George's playing 30 minutes uh, in the win against St. John's earlier in the week. Here comes Victor Page with a runner, and Victor Page needs to get it going. Well, he takes some tough shots. None tougher than that one. The runner through about three or four Pitt Panthers. Page has three. That was his first field goal. Well, look at him move without the ball. Oh, he didn't finish. Andre Howard was right there, but Pitt having much success inside. And they told us earlier today they needed to get something going in the paint. Page for three, and guess who is back on track? Well, he is streaky. There's no question about it. He misses his first three attempts, comes right out, hits two bullets in a row. Kevin Victor Page shooting the same from three-point land as he is from the field, 39%. Somehow it looks better from distance than overall. <laughs> Kelly Taylor leaving it for Howard, and it's taken away by the freshman point guard, Ed Sheffy. Sheffy, good ball handling. Nice pass to Long on the block by Andre Howard. Well, it's incredible defense. They have saved four baskets when George Hans had the numbers. That's a tough shot by Sheffy. Howard doing the job underneath pitch defensive glass. Oh, there's a foul. Long on the foul of Kelly Taylor. A little frustration for Georgetown. Well, you can understand why. They have worked so hard to get some good opportunities, and the couple strips that the Pittsburgh, Hoy uh, Pittsburgh Panthers have has been beautiful. 11.49 left in the first half. So far, Ralph Willard having it his way. His Panthers by 10. Pizza Hut employee memo number five. A word about napkins. It stands to reason that if you create a pepperoni that has less grease per piece of pepperoni, you're going to need less napkins. So, less napkins it is. On the other hand, if you put more pepperoni on the pizza, you might need more napkins. Which means, after some serious deliberation, we recommend the same amount of napkins. Okay, can we consider the napkin question put to rest? 
Now we can go on to placemats. You're on placemats. So feel free to let everyone know we're making it great again and again. I whack the weeds. <laughs> so you want to know what's on my Discover Card statement. I'm a camp cook and a bad one, but I've got a good stove. And he loves to chase that. <laughs> the cash back bonus award. It all folds up into a carry uh, She loves to get flowers, and I love to give them. How many credit cards make a statement like that? Well, the toughest thing about uh, buying a wetsuit is, is trying them on. It pays to discover. <laughs> Use it where you see the Nova sign. To see what really happened in sports this year, the best, the worst, the highs and lows, check out ESPN Magazine's The Year in Sports. Remember all the great moments. Michael's Gold Rush, Gary's Courage, and the greatest of them all. Relive the Duncan Dynasty and raise a cup to Colorado. Replay Doc's Redemption. Then bring in the Year of the Tiger. And check out 10 to Watch in 97. 1996, it was a very good year. And it's all in ESPN Magazine's The Year in Sports on newsstands now. Welcome back to Landover, Maryland, where Pitt's Panthers have led right from the start. They had a 10-0 run to go up by 15, but Georgetown scored the last five. And here's your John Hancock trivia question for today's game. John Thompson, the U.S. Olympic basketball coach in 1988. But what year did Big John serve as an Olympic assistant? We'll have our answer for you as you mull it over a little later on. I'm Eric Reed along with Kevin Greedy. Good start for Pitt, Kevin. They have scored 13 of their 20 points in the lane. Uh, they were hoping to get some points in the lane. They get that good three card backcourt, but good problem scoring points inside. And they're doing it against a good Hoya ball club. And that foul going against Gerald Jordan. That's the first on Jordan, the senior from Philadelphia. Jordan, a guy that had injury problems, tore a tendon in his foot back in November. A change for the Hoyas. Right now they've got Yaya Ja back in the game, along with Victor Page, Godwin Owingi, Ed Sheffy. There you see your numbers in the paint. That bodes well for Pitt. Here's Victor Page for a three. And the Panthers let it go out of bounds. Good box out action for Pitt. No Georgetown players able to get near Victor Page's miss. Page on the afternoon, two out of six, has six points, averaging over 22 a game. And even better than that, the Big East, 24 a game in the league play for Victor Page. This is Kelly Taylor. Played just nine minutes and one game a year ago before undergoing back surgery. Mark Blunt, the jump hook, off the mark. And it is taken down by a Wingy. Well, he is on a 5 nothing run, looking to get back in this game. John Thompson's gone to a small lineup. He's really trying to get the push offensively to try to beat that zone down the floor. And then on the other end, if they could find a way to score, to apply that pressure defense. Jared Lockhart with a foul, his first. You see John Thompson and Ed Sheffy, uh, every time they get a chance, those two talk. The freshman point guard playing for John. Not a first time it's happened. He's let a lot of young guards get their experience and their fire right uh, right from the start. Yeah. Sure. Most recently to mind, Allen Iverson. He came in here and just lit it up for two years. Of course, he's now playing for the 76ers. First round pick in the draft. And then a lot of pressure on Ed Sheffy. I think uh, a lot of people expected him to just come in and fill the shoes out and Iverson. That's impossible. Those expectations are much too high. And Sheffy having a mediocre shooting season, but he is a good point guard. He'll come into his own. And Fargo back after a little bit of a rest. Ball knocked out. And it will stay with Pitt. Godwin Owingi had a chance at it. But the Panthers will keep it. And now they come back. With Antigo Cummings, he picked up his second foul early, but his sit did not cost Pitt as Kelly Taylor comes to the bench. Yeah, it was very important. Our leading scorer, leading man on defense, Cummings. He sits, and really no ground made up by the Hoyas. And Heidi White back in for Georgetown, their massive center. They keep waiting for it to all come together for the big junior out of St. Louis. He's skilled, but he's been foul prone. You see him patrolling the middle of the lane for Georgetown defensively. Kevin Willard, nice pass to Vontigo Cummings. Get really moving it around well. Chad Varga missed the reverse and the rebound down to the freshman Shamel Jones. But still a 10-point lead for the Panthers. Just under 10 minutes left here in the first half. 
White leans in, and he was fouled by Mark Blount. A lot of folks look at Mark Blount and put him on the list of the league's most improved players. Uh, very little as a freshman. He has emerged as a shot blocker as his sophomore year. That's right. Just a three-point per game man now. He's a terrific force in defense, but I don't care what kind of defensive player you are. Once Jahidi White puts a body on you, there's no way you can get vertical. And Blount, who's an outstanding block shot man here for Pittsburgh, nullified there. And this big guy White, they make you horizontal. He leans those shoulders in here. Oh, he will. That ends a spell of six consecutive missed free throws for Georgetown. They are four of ten here in the first half. White averaging six points, nearly seven rebounds a game as a junior. First year as a starter after backing up Othella Harrington the last two years. Now seven straight points for Georgetown. They have cut a 15-point lead to eight. And shown this full court defensive pressure. Evan Will flipping ahead and fouled in the backcourt by Damon Jackson. That's the first down Jackson, 15 foul on John Thompson's squad. Cummings coming out of the double team well. Mayo, a corner triple. And here comes Victor Page. Get it and go. Victor. Yes. Oh, really under control that time. He took the ball to Kevin Willard. Couldn't do anything about it. Look Cummings that. attacking down the other end. Nice look down court for Pitt. Yeah, Kevin Willard. He got burned on defense. Too. Took the ball out of the basket and fired it full length of the court right in stride. That was just a beautiful transition basket by Pitt. Montego Cummings with four. Victor Page has eight for Georgetown. Page comes up short. The coach's son, Kevin Willard, with a rebound. Looking ahead, oh. turned it over. And we saw his man, Chad Varga, flash free and uh, lost concentration for just a moment. Damon Jackson out. And Shamel Jones will also sit down for Georgetown. As Yaya Ja checks back in. There's Yaya. His teammates call him Grandpa. He's the senior captain for Georgetown. Very mature young man. Yes, he is. <laughs> Thinking of that uh, nickname, Grandpa, but he has done a nice job for Georgetown. Very frustrating season. Ja knocks down the 15 footer. His first field goal for the leading rebounder in the Big East. Yaya Ja averaging eight points a game and in conference play, 12 rebounds a night. Well, they're trying to get him the ball more. You can see why. Ja has a nice touch from around that little 15, 18 foot area around the free throw area. First foul on Ed Sheffy, 16 foul on Georgetown. How about Yaya Ja, a guy that did very little last year, but just three points a game. The sudden emergence for Ja and a sudden emergence for Georgetown in this game. On the way up, Mark Blount was fouled. And Tim Higgins had no foul. Inadvertent whistle. We'll get a jump ball. Possession arrow will hand it over to Georgetown. Holy cow. Well, watch this play. Watch how he gets hit. And then he gets moved all the way across the court. It was a good pin, no question about it. That was all ball, but from behind, he got hammered on the body. Call goes against Pittsburgh, Hoyas ball. Georgetown on an 11 to 2 run. Bernard Long sent back by Blount. Nobody in the Big East has more shot blocks than this seven foot sophomore. Well, I don't know if we'll get to see this. Uh, watch Varga get thrown out of the way here on this play. To Heidi White put a shoulder into him, and Varga went flying. And White picks up his first foul. Bukar out into the game for Georgetown, and Shahidi White goes to the bench. White leaves with four. And Kelly Taylor into the game. Kevin Willard doing a nice job. <laughs> Kelly Taylor leads all Big East players in steals. One more than Shasheen Holloway from Seton Hall. Page has it sent back by Blount. Wow. Second big reject for the seven-footer. Shot. 
That's Yaya's spot. That's it. I mean, he can nail that jumper. If they could just get him the ball with some sort of regularity around the basket, Ja could be the answer for the Hoyas. Now, Kevin, we've gone back and forth. Pitt had a 10-0 run early in this game. Georgetown now in a 13-2 tear. And there's a two sent in by Airmail. Jason wow. Mail with a jumper. Keep in mind, he had 29 points against Michigan. But here in the Big East, they really scout him well. They get up on Mail, don't let him shoot that three. But he found the range on that one. Big time three-point shooter, but firing away at just a 29% clip in seven conference games prior to this one. Up hit by six, 7-10 left in this first half. Been a good one. We've gone back and forth between Pitt and Georgetown. And we've got a timeout here at U.S. Air Arena in Landover, Maryland. John Thompson's club riding the comeback trail. They're down by only six. You are a messenger of hope and the only one in whom the future can be entrusted. Is it not time then to prepare for the journey ahead? You are a survivor. You are alone. But you are strong. So you've chosen to be your own boss. Running your own business means doing what you love and doing what you do best, except one thing you don't love one bit, doing the books. Well, now you can say goodbye to your bookkeeping hassles forever because the makers of Quicken have invented QuickBooks, the number one selling accounting software that makes it fast and easy to do the things you don't love doing, like paying bills, writing invoices, figuring out what your customers owe, even tracking inventory and doing payroll. QuickBooks makes it all hassle-free. How's this for fast information? A click, and QuickBooks shows you this quarter's income and expenses. And look, a few keystrokes, and QuickBooks does your invoicing for you, and then does the bookkeeping automatically. So you can get back to doing what you do best, growing your business. It's even easy to try QuickBooks. Call now to get a trial version absolutely free through this special limited time TV offer. That number is 1-800-826-2186. Back here in Landover, Georgetown, down by 15 early. They are back in it. Victor Page leads John Thompson's group with eight. Chad Varka has seven for the Panthers. And we asked you that trivia question about John Thompson. He was the head coach of the U.S. Olympic basketball team when they won bronze and soul in 88. He served as Dean Smith's assistant in 76, gold in Montreal. Exactly. That was a great team. They had Phil Ford, Walter Davis, Mitch Kupchak, Tom Lagarde. It seemed like Dean brought all his Carolina boys for that one. Right on the miss after Pitt had a block shot. We got a foul on Georgetown. With Kevin Greeby, I'm Eric Reed. Glad you could join us for our Saturday noontime duel between Pitt and Georgetown. Foul is on Shenard Long, his second. And that is team foul number seven, so one and one for Pitt with seven minutes left in this first half. So far, this has really been a fun game. I mean, both teams really giving it their best. Right here in the end of January, where every Big East game is so important in the standings. Kelly Taylor, freshman out of Silver Spring, Maryland, gets the first of two. After one and one, so now he will get the second. And Kelly, a guy that went to John Thompson's high school all alma mater, Archbishop Carroll in Washington. I don't know how he got away from John Thompson. This Kelly Taylor can play. He gets his hands on more balls, leads the Big East in the steals. Look how soft his shot is, averages 10 points a game, almost four boards. I mean, he's a complete player like Montego Cummings. And Kelly Taylor with seven for Pitt here in the first half. Victor Page oh, he slides into the lane. He got away with a walk there. Vic Victor trying to find the gap in that zone, a little 1-3-1 one, one zone. Now watch him. He picks up the ball. One, two, three. Ah, they see a lot of NBA action here in Landover, but come on. And yeah, they're actually calling the walks a lot tighter up in the NBA this year. Yeah. Gerald Jordan picked up his second foul, 19 foul on Pitt as Jahidi White comes out. Victor Page, talk about an emerging player. Page with Iverson in foul trouble last year in the Big East Tournament Championship. 34 against Villanova 
and won the MVP of the tournament. First freshman to ever win uh, the Big East MVP in the tournament. Yeah, just an incredible performance by him. And they, in a losing effort, by the way. I mean, Connecticut came back and won that game. A miracle shot by Ray Allen, and he still got the MVP. It tells you what kind of offensive player he is. Ubacar Al on the pickup. Al on the drive. Ah, inside, Jerry Nichols was stripped. Yeah. Kelly Teller again. How many times has Pitt stripped underneath the basket? To all move, very good defender, bottling up Taylor. Now Jordan throws it into the backcourt. Now wilting a little bit under the yeah. tenacious Georgetown defense. Well, no need to panic. He's the biggest guy in the court. Bring the ball up above your head and be patient and find a man. And Jordan didn't do that. That's the second turnover he's had with that trap in the corner. Panthers have turned it over three times, last minute and a half as Bubakar Al comes out. Jahidi White is back. Jerry Nichols inbounding, the 6'4 junior out of Jackson, Mississippi. He's a guy that can give them some offense. Well, he's a great shooter, Jerry Nichols is. There's Yaya in his favorite spot. Missed that one. Montego Cummings and Kelly Taylor. Dynamic one-two punch in the pit backward. Look at that move. Black going up. Not getting it. Farga inside. This is Mayo. And White got a piece. Victor Page one-on-one -on -one with Kelly Taylor. Oh, oh, Page is a pit bull with the ball. He can get to the rim. Boy, you're exactly right. He smells that hoop, and nobody's going to deny him. What a move in the open court by Victor Page. And great, great defense underneath their own basket as Pittsburgh had three attempts and could not get that ball in the hole. And watch how he makes his move left and then comes to the jump stop. Just too strong, too explosive to defend that. Great move, great body control. Victor Page gets his points in a lot of different kind of ways. Not just standing, hitting that jumper, but attacking the basket. That's something that the NBA scouts will certainly like to see. And the Georgetown defense taking its toll. And Page writing another impressive chapter to his sophomore season. Victor has a dozen points. Georgetown on a 17-6 run. Remember, they trailed by 15 in the early moments. Wow. Oh, needed the strong finish, put it up there softly, and he knows he erred. But he will go to the line for two. Yeah, I know Blount would love to have that one back, but that's what the defense and the size of Georgetown does to you. They intimidate you a little bit on this shot. Instead of throwing it down, and there was a little bit of contact, he doesn't get it, but just maybe a little lack of concentration. Now. He can make up for it, though, if he makes it too free. Now he right back in, Bubakar out to the bench. As Mark Blount fires up and makes the first. Kevin freaky injury to Blount. Missed two weeks with an infected wrist. He had to have surgery on it. His wrist somehow wound up uh, near the mouth of Andre Howard. Howard's teeth cut into it, got infected. They had to clean it out and a rather freakish way to miss two weeks. Oh, yeah. It's just incredible what's happened to Pittsburgh over the last year and a half and all their injuries. Oh, nice call by John Thompson to call a 22nd. He saw Ed Sheffy pinched in a surprise trap by Pittsburgh, and he called the timeout for his ball club. And you get three 20s. John has used two here in the first half. Here it happened right here, and this is when John Thompson jumped off the bench, immediately called a timeout. That saved a possible turnover for sure. A six-point lead here for Pitt with 5.17 left in the first half. And let's look ahead to next Saturday. Noontime duel at the Carrier Dome. Highly rated Villanova against Jim Beheim's club. And following that at two, that's always a battle. Pitt in Morgantown against the Mountaineers of West Virginia. Check your local listings. Along with Kevin Grevy, I'm Eric Reed. Delighted to have you with us from U.S. Air Arena in Landover, Maryland. Georgetown mounting a valiant comeback. They fell behind in this game, 20 to 5. A little more than 13 minutes left. They have come back and uh, made it again. And what's turned it around in your mind for Georgetown, Kevin? Well, Victor Page, number one, just exploded with some scoring where they couldn't get him the ball. He was 0 for 3 during that period of time. And then the defense has done a much better job inside. Where Pittsburgh was getting points in the paint, they're having a lot harder time doing that. And give Jahadi White credit, Yaya, for stepping up when they needed to.
Victor Page back on track with a dozen. You saw Ed Sheffy come out. Tuomu is in the game. Tuomu got a hurt late in the Miami game, and that hurt Georgetown. They lost a 13-point lead in the final eight and a half minutes without Tuomu. Jahidi White using that big body, yep. but he's called for the offensive foul. Well, there's a little spin move, and look at Chad Varga. He just read that play. That's the scan report. Jahidi White will put his head down and barrel into you. You can take the charge on him. And it's a tough thing for a young man to go through, always getting in foul trouble. Just when you think you're on the verge of overcoming that, as Jahidi White has got four points, looked like he was coming out of those foul problems. Montego Cummings, nice lob ahead for Kelly Taylor. The pressure handled. Cummings, a three ball. Montego Cummings with his 20th triple of the year. He's got seven for the Panthers on three for three shooting and Pitt is extended back out to nine. Four and a half to go first half here in Landover. Victor Page, he's taken 10 of Georgetown's 22 shots. He has 12 of their 22 points. There's Kelly Keller again getting his hand on the ball. Frustrating the offense. This guy is so quick. Amazing comeback from back surgery. Now Pitt with nine points off the turnovers. Georgetown just two out of their defense. Yaya got hammered from behind by Chad Varga. Now John Thompson saying about Yaya Ja. There's a difference between being a scoring leader and a team leader. Ja is a team leader. Well, he's been actually calling for the ball this year, and he has said public in the paper, I need that ball to get in my hands, especially at crunch time, to make something happen. Maybe not necessarily to take a shot like he did there, but to make the play. And that's what you like to see, that assertiveness of a leader, and he certainly is a team leader. Jaya and the players now are starting to recognize that and getting him the ball. Chad Varga picked up his first foul. Yaya Ja. Just a 27% free throw shooter on the year. He's five of 16. Gets one of two. Georgetown nine out of 16 from the line here in the first half. And they trail it by eight with just under four minutes left. Montego Cummings, nice turnaround move. How about that? Four of four for Cummings. And did he ever earn that one? That ball stayed in his hand the whole possession. He just broke down Victor Page. Very tough on the dribble, Ten Montego point, Cummings. Ten-point Panther lead, Kevin, in that pit backward of Cummings and Kelly Taylor really getting the job done here in the first half. Now you saw how Mark Blanc, the shot blocker, changed the trajectory of that one. But on the play, Damon Jackson was fouled, so he'll go to the stripe and shoot a pair because that was the tenth team foul on Pitt. That was Damon Jackson's intent also to drive that ball to the basket, try to draw the foul on Mark Blount. They could get Mark Blount out of the game. Then you would really see the Hoyas start attacking that goal. And Kelly Taylor, the man, called for the foul, his first. That's a break for Pittsburgh. Directed as Blount already has two. Damon Jackson averages five a game, the sophomore of Alexandria, Virginia. He had gone scoreless in two of his last three. Well, it was Jackson who really picked up some scoring and won some minutes from John Thompson. He was buried on the end of the bench last year and early in this season. Kelly Taylor got his hand on it, but it bounces out to Georgetown. Victor Page on the spinner. Look at oh, Victor Page with 14. The fadeaway against three Pittsburgh defenders. And coming back aggressively, Vontigo Cummings picks up the foul on Damon Jackson. That's number two on Jackson. Well, this this is a great move. Watch him come to the jump stop and then fade. And when you're a left-hander, I'm a left-hander. When I would fade, I would fade going to my right. Exactly what Victor did. It's very difficult to do that when you're going left. Victor Page, homegrown product out of McKinley Tech in Washington, D.C. As Ed Sheffy comes back, freshman will sit down. Uh, Joe Tuumu. And uh, Jahidi White replaces Bubakar Al. Al goes to the bench with a couple of points. Montego Cummings, nine in the game, four of four from the field. And he had to set a good seven, eight minutes 
when he got his foul problems. That's another guy that's really come on. Last year, he was set back with a fractured hand. Montego Cummings had just three games with 11 points or more, and he comes off the game. He had just three at Boston College, which was his season low. But Vontigo already with 10 in the first half. Pitt leads by eight. Pizza Hut memo number six, 65 pepperonis. Guys, you saw the memo? When we said 65 pepperonis for large pepperoni pizza, it was not, repeat, not a typo. One, it's 65, 20 more than last year. Overlap, 65. So start laying them down. 64, Soon you'll have a better wrist than a car dealer in Vegas. 62, 63, 64, 65. And trust us, nobody ever complained about too much pepperoni on a pizza. Five, six, six. Hey, we've got 56. Pizza Hut, making it great. Hey, Mom! Again and again. ESPN, the leader in sports broadcasting, presents the Total Sports Video Library. Featuring over 80 action-packed titles, including the greatest moments in sports history, informative how-to videos from renowned experts, and the funniest bloopers ever made. Whatever your sport, ESPN Home Video has got what you need. To order, call 1-800-717-ESPN. From the people who brought you one clever idea after another comes the Plymouth Voyager Plus sale. Right now you can get a Plymouth Voyager Plus, this great limited time lease offer for only $2.49 a month. You get air conditioning, seven passenger seating, and more. And you get it for only $2.49 a month. Don't miss the Plymouth Voyager Plus sale, another clever way to save. And it's only at your Plymouth dealer. Welcome back to Landover, Maryland, where pit coach Ralph Willard must be saying in guards, we trust because Kelly Taylor and Vontigo Cummings have combined for 17. Now coming up, Villanova Wildcats, coached by Steve Lapis, led by Tim Thomas, a rematch with Syracuse. The Orange went to Philly and won. Can they do it again at the Carrier Dome? Jim Beheim hopes so. Next Saturday, high noon showdown, Villanova and Syracuse. Well, your matinee game this afternoon, playing well for Pitt. They've led by as much as 15. Right now, they lead it by eight, little more than three left. I'm Eric Reed, along with Kevin Grevy. Been impressed with Pitt's guard play, Kevin. Boy, I have. I mean, they have just been terrific. However, they haven't been able to stop Victor Page, and that is their main objective, as Page is just dynamite as far as scoring. Here's White swinging in for the hook. And oh, the foul. loose ball foul on the rebound from Chad Varga. He pushed Yaya Ja out of the way. Varga's second foul. Well, you mentioned uh, Victor Page. He has 14 of Georgetown's 26 points today. And here comes Andre Howard. He will sit down Chad Varga. Ralph Willard protecting his senior forward from the Motor City. They want to get that third foul here in the first half. Six for Yaya Ja. Average is eight. One. I think the NBA scouts have noticed Yaya, the athletic ability and the emergence here in his senior year. Oh, yeah, the way he has improved from one year to the next. Just incredible. Great rebounder. He's got a beautiful soft shot. But I can't understand his free throw shooting, 27%. That is alarming. But three of four today. Yeah. All right. Maybe he'll just uh, put an end to all those uh, stats. Of course, the Hoyas have a pretty good track record when it comes to big guys. <laughs> That's true. Howard on the miss. He needs to become a better finisher. He needs oh, yeah. some strength, does Andre Howard. Yeah, Howard has hurt him. He's had three opportunities to score inside and hadn't done it. Ed Sheffy knocking down a runner. The freshman averages eight. That's his first deuce. And he's coming off a pretty good game his last outing. Eight points, four assists. Sheffy could give them some scoring. That should sure help Victor Page. Also had four steals in the win again. Oh, air mail from Jason Mayle. He knocks in a triple. Mayle has five. And every time Georgetown gets close, Pitt puts on a little run. They're up seven. Sheffy, a three. Oh, man. They're starting to heat up here at USA Arena. How about that, Ed? Sheffy, five in a row. For Georgetown, it's a four-point lead for Pitt. Might be the best streak the Hoyas have been on all season long. Five in a row, incredible. Nice look, 
Blount lays it in from the coach's son, Kevin Willard, who's done a nice job distributing. Boy, Hadney Eric, he has come off the bench and really doing a nice job penetrating. Well, Howard again with a sloppy play. Ralph Willard's really angry at him. Now watch him. He catches the ball. He gets a break here because that ball got slapped out of his hands. Now coming up at the half, which is just a minute 24 away, a visit with the Willards of Pitt. Nice family story. We'll also check the Big East Wire, which features a red hot Miami club and a Connecticut team facing some turmoil. Andre Howard, the sophomore out of Philadelphia, to the line. Andre has scored just four points in the last six games. Ralph Willard hoping the free throws will drop. Well, you can only sit there and just root them on. Very tough to watch your ball club step up there and miss opportunities. Bernard Long picked up his third foul. Howard has them both bounce away. Pitt has missed their last three foul shots. Victor Page a little out of control, but the Hoya is able to hold on to it. Yeah, yeah, he loves that 15-foot strike. And Kelly Taylor, boy, he shows you toughness. Oh, he does. For a little guy, he's all around the ball, getting boards, assists, doing the little things. Averages four rebounds and already has four rebounds. Under a minute left in this first half, here is Kelly Taylor. Taylor has seven points to go with those four boards. On a spin by Page. Jason Mayo. This is Howard. Five on the shot clock. Airmail. Yes! Oh, 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 oh. Oh, triple. Oh, Wolverine. Incredible shooting display by Jason Mayo. He's got three three-pointers, all on rainbows. Uh, Jason Mayo, three for seven shooting, give him eight first-half points. Nine-point lead for Pitt. Now, Panthers have been resilient. They had the big lead early when they took off to a 15-point burst and let it 20 to 5. Georgetown has made several runs back, but Pitt holding the fort. And Sheffy with a three. Boy, Sheffy has struggled all season long with his jumper. That one gets down. Ed Sheffy giving Georgetown a boost, Kevin. He scored eight points late in this first half. And John Thompson's club could be worse. They got off to a very slow start. They are within six, halfway through here at U.S. Air Arena in Landover. ESPN News is great because I get all these breaking stories from people like Peter Gammons. And with ESPN Net Sports Zone, I can find out more about a story I just heard on ESPN News. Or go into Peter Gammons' chat room. Share my thoughts with Peter. Find out why he won't return my calls. Or just be with him. You know what I don't like? His wife. She's not very. A friend of mine told me, try America Online. I said, why? I've got a computer. He said, try it. You'll see. It's simple. Every time you sign on, welcome. It tells you if you've got mail. You've got mail. Want to send some email? Type the message, click here, and it's done. I like this. With one click, I can browse all kinds of great features on America Online. I've gotten help with my golf swing, planned my next vacation. I even get stock price updates every 15 minutes. America Online has over 100 newspapers and magazines. Everything from Business Week Online to Cycle World. 
and I can browse them all. With America Online, you can point and click your way across the Internet. And their web browser makes it easy to explore the World Wide Web. Call the toll-free number and you'll receive your free startup kit in 50 free hours to look around. It's worth a try. You'll see. Try the new America Online. Call 1-800-922-1991 for your free startup kit and 50 free hours. Call now. Your Saturday Big East matinee from Landover, Maryland at halftime. Hoyos of Georgetown, the Panthers of Pitt. And it's time to check our Big East wire. Hi again, everybody. I'm Eric Reed, along with Kevin Greedy, one of our favorite times on this Saturday halftime special. A check on what's happening around the Big East Conference. And Kevin, a lot of good news coming out of South Florida. Leonard Hamilton's Miami Hurricanes, a rising team in the Big East, already have road wins at Villanova and at Georgetown. Home victories against Providence, Georgetown, Syracuse, and Connecticut. Well, I tell you, he has that team really playing basketball. Maybe the surprise team of the Big East. Norris is doing a great job at the line, and uh, James Gang is playing some basketball. Pete Gillen, big success at Xavier of Ohio before arriving at Providence. A chance for a personal milestone when his Friars take St. John's on in New York tonight. Well, all of us are certainly rooting for Pete. He's a terrific basketball coach, one of the nice guys in the Big East. A couple hundred of those wins must have taken place at Xavier. <laughs> <laughs> Tough times at Connecticut. Jim Calhoun's worst fears realized when the NCAA suspended his senior center, Kirk King, for the rest of the year. and. Ricky Moore will have to sit out at least three more games. Yeah, that's devastating for UConn. That's really a very severe penalty for what I've heard. And of course, it's being appealed by the school and by the Big East. And let's hope that they can win that appeal. Well, they need those two players, Ricky Moore and Kirk King. And we'll see how that all works out. We'll have more halftime coming up, a feature on Pittsburgh's Family Matters. That and a whole lot more coming up from Landover in just a moment. From its beginnings as the first Catholic college in America, Georgetown has been open to students of every religious persuasion. That's its Jesuit tradition. And faithful to that tradition, Georgetown has had teaching at its heart for over 200 years. And something wonderful happens to students here. You can see it. And not just those students who earn roads and Marshall scholarships. All students benefit. Georgetown University, America's oldest Catholic university. Take strokes off your game. Guaranteed. Jack Nicholas's personal technique that helps straighten slices. Take strokes off your game. Guaranteed. Dave Peltz's revolutionary technique that has even the pros putting more accurately. Take strokes off your game. Guaranteed. Get out of sand without sweat. Greg Norman's Earth Mover secret shows you how. Guaranteed. Now take two, three, four, even more strokes off your game with the secrets you'll get in your free issue of Golf Magazine. Take strokes off your game. Guaranteed. Master teacher Jim McLean's simple secret to longer, straighter tee shots every time. Call now to get your free issue of Golf Magazine, plus receive your free Golf Magazine umbrella. Shoot lower, play better, or you don't pay. That's the Golf Magazine guarantee. Call now for your free no-obligation issue of Golf Magazine. If you decide to subscribe, get 11 more issues, 12 in all, for just $16.97. Plus, this Golf Magazine umbrella free with your paid subscription. Call now. Saturday, January 25th, 8 a.m. to 11 p.m., it's the one and only one-day sale at Nobody Beats the Wiz. Absolutely every item in every Nobody Beats the Wiz store is on sale. No ifs, ands, or buts. Every TV, camcorder, audio component, compact disc, computer, telephone, and camera, everything. And here's the Nobody Beats the Wiz challenge. If it's not on sale Saturday, it's yours free. This Saturday, our one and only one-day sale. Nobody Beats the Wiz. Special preview day Friday. Welcome back to the USA Arena in Landover, Maryland, where the Panthers and Hoyas are at halftime. And it's our time to take a look at Pittsburgh's family affair. Having your son is, is a double-edged sword. One, you get an opportunity to see him play, uh, which you wouldn't do if you were coaching and he was playing somewhere else. But there's obviously a lot of other pressures that are added to that situation when your son plays for you. If your son doesn't bring a great attitude and a great work ethic, I think the situation is almost impossible. Fortunately for... For us, Kevin brings a great work ethic and a great attitude to practice every day into games, and it really helps the situation an awful lot. 
At Pittsburgh, the relationship between Ralph and Kevin Willard is both coach and player, as well as father and son. Kevin first played for his dad at Western Kentucky, then moved on with him to Pittsburgh in 1994. At first, neither planned on their relationship extending to the basketball court. We didn't want to do it. We didn't want to go through, you know, depression and everything. But uh, I didn't get recruited out of high school. And so uh, it was either go to play Division II or go to Western Kentucky and sit out a year and try to get better and maybe play. Well, I try to discourage Kevin from playing at Western Kentucky because of the, the father-son relationship, but the fact that he had gone to high school there, the fact that the people in the community knew him, knew how hard he worked, knew he had a great attitude, knew that he was, he was, a, he was a good young man, made it a lot easier. And Kevin made it very, very clear from the beginning that he wanted to play for me. While many might think being the coach's son would make things easier, but Kevin Willard knows differently. In his first game at home this season, he was reminded just how tough it can be. You know, Kevin had three great games in Hawaii. He had a 13 assist and two turnovers over there in three games against Maryland, Northwestern, and Michigan. Came back, and the first time we put him in the game here, you know, some people booed. And having talked to other coaches who've had their sons play for them, it's, that thing is universal. You have to accept it. You know it's going to happen, and you have to live with it. There are internal pressures as well. Kevin has to deal with the demands of a coach who expects more of him than any other player on the pit team. What I try and do as a coach is to get our players to play through mistakes. Probably the person that has the least opportunity to play through mistakes is Kevin because, again, uh, it's, it's a double reflex action. It's one, protecting him, and two, is trying to alleviate the pressure of, you know, somebody not playing well who happens to be your son. Some guys have a... a ability to make four mistakes and stay the game. I really only have the capability of making one mistake. And that, you know, that's because he has so much pressure on him from, you know, people outside the program. And just, you know, everyone's looking down at him and saying, you know, well, you know, he just made a turnover. Why isn't he taking him out of the game? And I, I understand that. Despite the pressures, both father and son say things are working out rather well and both believe they benefit from one another. I really think he is the best bass coach around. Uh, I know a lot of coaches, um, but I think the way he communicates with his players, the way he, during a timeout, the way he just changes a game, a game plan around instantly is amazing. I see a young man who's getting a real understanding of human nature and being able to deal with a very difficult situation that can only help him down the road in his life. Today it's Pittsburgh and Georgetown, and we'll have more halftime activities here at the U.S. Air Arena in Landover, Maryland, right after this. Opportunity is all we can ask. The opportunity to grow, to persevere, to make our dreams come true. The Big East Conference believes education is opportunity. That's what we provide for over 4,000 student athletes each year. We give them the tools to accomplish great things. They do the rest. Go ahead. It's safe to dream because opportunity is waiting for you in the Big East Conference. years I did the sports in four minutes now you got this channel with breaking news highlights scores you know I was doing sports bloopers back then well, we used to call them goofy gaffs same garbage
And welcome back to U.S. Air Arena in Landover, Maryland, where the Panthers have played very well through one half and have a six-point lead the show for it. And we welcome you back inside the U.S. Air Arena. I'm Eric Reed, along with Kevin Greedy. This is a game that Pitt has controlled. They got off to a 10-3 start, led by as much as 15. Four times Georgetown got within four, Kevin, but never any closer. Well, they just couldn't cut that gap any closer. Partly, dude, some great defense. And watch this particular play right here. Yaya and Victor Page were just phenomenal there in the open court. Victor finishing really took him a while to get going, but once he did, he was just unstoppable. And it was Vontago Cummings who um, just did the job really offensively. He got some foul problems, but four of four from the field, 10 points to lead his ball club with just a beautiful shot. That give you an idea how well Pitt is playing. Look at the shooting percentage, 52% from the field. They've also knocked in four triples. Pretty good at the line, even on the boards, and just seven turnovers against that vaunted Georgetown defense. Leading scorer in the first half, Vontigo Cummings had 10 for Pitt. Victor Page, 14 for the Hoyas. They are the sheep, and we are the shepherds. We tell them that college is the doorway. We tell them to prepare for the future. But the question remains, will we? Presenting a space age innovation that alleviates a fundamental shortcoming of modern mass communication insufficient access to televised college basketball. It's called ESPN Full Court. At the push of a few buttons, you get tons of great college hoops action you couldn't get otherwise. Sent right to your TV. To subscribe, call your cable operator or direct TV. ESPN Full Court. A giant leap for mankind. East Basketball on Sports Channel is brought to you in part by your Tri-State GMC dealers. Now there's a vehicle designed to give you greater control in the downhill that lets you express yourself with its free style and is instrumental in getting you cross country. Jimmy by GMC. With available push button four wheel drive and a lease price that's easy to handle, it lets you conquer life's ups and downs. See your Tri-State GMC dealer today. This tank of gas brought to you by National Car Rental. We welcome you back to your Saturday, Saturday Big East matinee. A big first half for the Panthers. Excellent shooting, 42 points. Cohesive offensive work for Pitt so far, Kevin Greavy. All cylinders. They have played tremendous. The if you're a Pitt Panther booster, though, you got to be concerned as well as they played and shot and held in check. So many of the Hoyas, they only have a six-point lead. Kelly Taylor, seven points, five rebounds, couple of steals. Vontigo Cummings, ten points, four of four from the field. And Georgetown with a lineup change. Got Shenard Long, the freshman, in the starting lineup for Bubakar Al. Taylor, soft roll, but Yaya Ja with a rebound. Ja had four rebounds in the first half. He averages 12. Here's Victor Page, an air ball on the three. From behind, Long knocked it away from Cummings. Good hustle for the freshman, Long. Pitt will keep it. And that's why Long's in the game, to play defense. He's there to check Montego Cummings to get on the loose ball, get the boards. Mark Blunt. Now Blunt, who had a couple of blocks in the first half. Chalks up his eighth point of the game. 
Here, little three-quarter court, full-court pressure. Try to get the quick trap and then fall back into a zone. This guy had the hot hand into the first half, and he has continued right along. Ed Sheffy now has 10 points. Yeah, Ed Sheffy really was remarkable at the end of the first half. Three of three from threes, 11 points, and that's huge for the Hoyas. That takes some of the pressure off of Victor Page. Oh, he should have shot. Could have had two free throws. Alizon Page, that's his second. Now well, it's Sheffy, four of five from the field in route to those 11 points. He is George Shant's number two scorer on the year and for the day. And Victor Page definitely needs a co-star here at Georgetown. <laughs> he does, desperately. Jason Mann. Yes. Jason Mann, his third triple of the game. He has 11. Well, I guarantee you John Thompson has told his fellas to get up on him. Don't let him shoot the three. He's three of five in this game for threes. And it's just a breakdown defensively by the Hoyas. 46 triples on the year for the senior out of Forest City, Pennsylvania. Oh, nice play by Kelly. Uh, Kelly Taylor thought he had the deflection, but he will be called for the foul, his second of the day. Oh, I'm real surprised they called a foul on him. Now watch him come from behind, tap the ball. Look like it was just a great block. Godwin Wingy is in. Shenard Long sits down for Georgetown. Just a couple minutes into our second half. The Hoyas trail the Panthers by eight, and on the inbounds play, another Pittsburgh foul, their second here in the second half. And this one is on Jason Mayle, his second of the game. Yeah, breakdown by Mayle. Let a Winchy get inside him. Good position. Victor Page with 14 points fires over Varga. Yaya Ja on the putback. White battling for it, and they will jump it up. Nobody wants to let go. Mark Blount and Jahidi White. Good battle for the slender seven-footer, Blount. Yeah, Blount has come out smoking. He made the jumper. He's gotten on the boards. Good step up by Chad Varga to force an errant shot, and then look underneath the mix. You just get pushed underneath the basket. It's Jahidi White so strong, but did the right thing. And Sheffy, look out. White! Oh, my. Blount was not about to let White throw it down. Oh, he challenged the big guy. Really surprised that Blount would have done this, but he made a great play. Watch Jahidi White. He's going up for the thunder dunk, and there is Blount with the rejection with the foul on the body. Third foul on Mark Blount. Got more shot blocks than anybody else in the Big East this year, and he wasn't going to be a part of Jahidi White's personal highlight film. <laughs> And proves to be a wise decision by Blount. They could run it at the stripe instead of the easy deuce on the stuffer. Yeah, the Hoyas really have problems at the line, so in doubt, foul. But now Blount's got three fouls. He's got to be careful. Oh, he's got a nice bounce. Coach 10, 12 of 21 at the foul line. White has five points, and Georgetown trails by seven. Antigo Cummings, nice kill. Oh, yeah. And Varga did a great job setting a pick, rolling to the basket. Good look. And in midair, caught and shot. Nine points for Chad Varga, nine point pit lead of Antigo Cummings. More of a scorer by nature, but you see some point guard instincts emerging from him. Page has missed both his shots here in the second half. And Pitt able to hold on. Kelly Taylor advancing with the Panthers up nine. Cummings for three. Kelly Taylor got hit on the head and still kept playing. Good play by him to get the ball to the floor and find Cummings. And the referee's going to check him out. It's just a gutsy effort. He got hit but kept on playing through the pain. Right here, he's not it's him grab his head. <laughs> Assist. Here is the beautiful play by Montego de Tavarga. That was just a great look right there. Two men really working well together. Ralph Willard has to be pleased with his team's poise and their offense. Montego Cummings, 13 points. 
on five for five shooting the Panthers 18 assists on 20 made field goals. That's unheard of. Well it is and that shows the unselfishness of this ball club and a real credit to Ralph Willard. In spite of all the problems that they've had with injuries and players going down be able to work these guys in and doing it in such an unselfish nature. It's really been pretty basketball out here by Pitt. That was just the third year for Ralph Willard after a great stint at Western Kentucky, the former Rick Pitino assistant with both the New York Knicks and the Kentucky Wildcats. I think he's got getting uh, the building blocks in place for his program. He's having a terrific recruiting year. Ja, and get that one. Reese Gibson, the freshman, missing from point blank. But Pitt has already signed five highly recruited players. They're having a banner recruiting year. Oh, Taylor God. rejected by Jean. Look at little Taylor. Panthers hang in there. Incredible. Taylor. You know, he just got two rebounds on that segment. He got the long rebound on defense, came down, picked up a loose ball, and throws in a little hook shot. Now the freshman Taylor having a big time afternoon, Kevin. Nine points and eight rebounds. The rebounds are season high for Taylor. You know, it just shows you, you don't have to be the tallest guy on the floor, the biggest, to get rebounds. You just get in there and hustle, you can do it. Uh-oh, that's going to go on Brown, I believe. That's pushing off. That is a tough foul to go against him. There at that, he has shored up the inside defense for Pitt. Now Ralph Willard's going to have to make a change and go in with Jordan in the line, who's not nearly the defender that Blount is. Well, Mark Blount having a pretty good day. Eight points, a couple of blocks, but he'll have to sit with 16 minutes left. Tuomu is in, and Ed Sheffy, who intermittently has really had the hot hand today, he'll sit with 11 points. Whistle before the inbounds, and it's a hold on Jason Mayo. That's his third foul. Okay, Mayo's having a little problem there on the weak side against this inbounds play. He has broken down, given up a basket, and has given and had two fouls. He's matched up with Yaya. That's oh, a right. great deflection by Cummings. Kelly Taylor, nobody gonna get him. Oh, and he throws it down. The little big man makes the play. Was Taylor made for Kelly. 16 point lead. This is the biggest of the day for Pitt. What an impressive road show for the Panthers. They have outscored Georgetown here in the second half, 14 to 4. In a strange game, a lot of runs here. Here's Page, the southpaw with a triple. Well, Page really needed that for the Hoyas. He sensed it, and he got the best look he's gotten all game long. And Pitt better not let him get his run. Now here in Georgetown, they say hail to the victor, who has 17, and the lead for the Panthers is 13. Taylor and Cummings oh. with dynamite in the pit backward today. There's Jason at top. Airmail. Got it. Another splashdown <laughs> for Jason Mail. He has four triples in this game on four of six from downtown. 14 for Jason Mail. You know, Pittsburgh's so good with Jason Mail can hit that three. Because then you got Ventango Commons taking the ball to the basket. They got the inside out. Look at the field goal shooting disparity between these two ball clubs. And we were wondering, could Pittsburgh keep up the hot shooting? They were 52% in the first half. And oh. travel on John. Interesting. Pitt started the game seven of nine from the field. They have started the second half seven of nine from the field. And they lead by 16. We'll have more Big East action in just a moment.
Is gray hair sneaking up on you, right under your nose, making you look too old? Whoa, it is sneaking up on me. Up here, too. You need Just for Men gel, made for the hard-to-color gray of mustaches and sideburns. Simply brush in this no-drip gel, and in five minutes, rinse. Gray's gone. Your mustache and sideburns blend perfectly with your natural hair color. That gray won't sneak up on me again. Just for Men gel, the sure thing for a natural look. Win the day for Pitt would move them even in the Big East 7 standings with Georgetown. And the Panthers have played maybe their best ha uh, ball game so far this year. Wow. Look at the play. But Kelly Taylor, smallest guy on the court with the slam. And then the penetration, Jason Mayo from three. And the backcourt trio of the Pittsburgh Panthers has been phenomenal. The Hoyas have had no answer against it. Kelly Taylor, 11 points, eight, of, eight rebounds, five assists. Jason Mayle on the bench now with 14. And Vontigo Cummings, 13 on five of five shooting. And there is the first miss today for Cummings. And on the rebound, the foul called against Gerald Jordan. That's his third. And it's team foul number six on Pitt. So one more, and it'll be one and one for Georgetown Ralph Willard's club. Up 16 with 14-21 left. Well, the Panthers got a lot of uh, momentum going for them right now. They don't want to break this momentum. Keep playing hard. Shaw got it and a foul. That's Shaw's favorite spot. You got to get in his face when he gets around that free throw area. That time guarded a little bit closely by Kevin Willer trying to help out. There's a spin move, hits him on the wrist, and now a potential three-point play to cut into that large lead by Pitt. Second foul on Kevin Willard, who played very well in the first half. Another one of those Pitt guards. Kevin had five assists and just one turnover in the first half. But he knows his role. He's not in there to start shooting the ball. He did take one field goal attempt, missed it. He's in there for assists. On the way, Ja now has 10 for Georgetown. Oh! Ja taking other liberties against the Georgetown defense. Look out, Chad Varga! for Varga and Landover is stirring with pitch performance. Oh man, that is highlight for the Big East. Chad Varga with a big time throwdown right on Yaya Zha. Page, well, he was fouled, but it went on call. Taylor hitting ahead for Cummings. Get it to Varga. He's hot. You called it, he hit it. <laughs> Varga with 13-6 here in the second half. The lead is 63 to 46. I don't think there's any way Georgetown is going to come back from this. Pittsburgh is feeling it. They sense the kill. Up 17 with just That's over 13 travel. minutes left. A travel on job. They're in shock. Pittsburgh, Chad Varga's dunk has shook up this ball club. Not only did it cost him two points, but it was such an emotional play by Varga. Now John Thompson not used to losing at home. His Hoyas last year went 16-0 here on the home court. They have already lost Big East games this season here to Miami and Connecticut. That's right. They had a 24-game home win streak snapped by Miami. What a game that was. Kevin Norris. Oh, he's become the hurricane the hero. He hit a jumper with four tenths of a second left to beat Georgetown here in Miami, sweeping the Hoyas this season. There's a steal by Ed Sheffy. Cummings made a great play to get back in it, but Sheffy able to finish. Ed has 13. The Hoyas trail it 63 to 48. A big comeback in order. That was Pitt's first turnover in the last 13 minutes. And Vartigo Cummings. He's missed only one shot all day. He's got 15 points. Well, you love your point guard to be able to go inside and dish and deal on the big man. He's an amazing player. He's got a big time future just a oh, sophomore. He does. You know, he, at his position, he's one of the best players in the Big East. That's the second 17 point lead for Pitt today. And Victor Page is on the bench right now for Georgetown. John, look at the John. board. The Big East rebound leader missing on that roundhouse hook. And Jordan that lets for Vontigo coming. Under 12 minutes left. Hit on the road and leading by 17. They've never won here. Come on, 
Panthers playing with great composure today. Well, they are. They're using the clock now. Making good shots. Oh, coming to Slasher. Oh! Did not finish. Ja with a rebound. Oh, look at it. Go Cummings with the swipe. Well, that's why he's getting you about three steals a game. He and Taylor are just incredible. Here comes Taylor on the oh. scoop for two. Boy, they are really operating. They're breaking down the defense of the Hoyas, making them look silly on the perimeter. Kelly Taylor with 13 points, nine boards. He has made five of his seven shots. And this has been a showcase afternoon for this upcoming Panther program. They lead it by 19 with 11 minutes left. And Kevin, you don't think Georgetown has enough to come back in this I year. really don't. I mean, they've dug a leap, uh, a hole for themselves. They don't have the scoring far apart. Victor Page isn't even on the court right now. I don't know what the Hoyas are thinking. And it's been turning into a horror show at home for Georgetown today. Montego Cummings. Chad Varga open. Varga denied by Ja, but foul. Rick Pitt won't take no for an answer. A Another spirited one. performance for the Panthers today. They're really battling hard on the boards. Not harder than Chad Varga. Watch this rebound. He comes from back, grabs it, and then immediately attacks. Instead of just taking the ball, throwing it back out, attack him, he's going to get two free throws. Chanel Jones picked up the foul. Chad Varga slicked back and ready to go. Averaging 14 points a game in conference games this year. Tuomu comes out. Damon Jackson is in. You can see how they lost uh, so many games early in the year with Vargas sitting with that stress fracture just above the ankle and then taking time to come back. But now he's got it on rhythm. You can see by some of the spectacular plays he's made in this game. And the guard play of Pitt. This is a Big East team to be reckoned with. Victor Page back in, unloads. And a foul on the shot called against Vontigo Cummings, his third. Remember Vontigo early in this game picked up two fouls. Ralph really sat him down. This is his first foul. Set. Yeah, I think he learned his lesson uh, getting those quick fouls. Now, he does a nice job. See, Willard falls, and then Cummings sees that, and he goes flying out at the shooter. He does pick up a foul. Chad Varga gets a seat on the pit bench. He has played well today. 14 points for Varga, and in is Isaac Hawkins, a 6'8 freshman out of Baton Rouge, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. He went to Hartford Military Academy in Virginia last year. Guy they tell us is really coming on a relentless pursuer of rebounds is Hawkins. Now, Victor Page got one of two. He's got 18 points. It hasn't been enough for Georgetown today. The Hoyas trail by 19. The idea of a 24-hour sports news network was actually mine. I thought breaking news. Extended highlights, scores anytime. It's a winning idea. So I told my girlfriend. So I told my neighbor. So I told my garbage man about it. He thought it was a great idea. You know, I'm, I've got a lot of ideas. I'm pretty bright. Of course, now, now that it's on the air, everybody's taking credit. It's my idea. It was actually my idea. Mine. This is all me. This is my idea. It came to me on the toilet. You know, it's kind of pathetic the way other people are trying to take credit for this. Someday there will be no subways or corporate ladders to climb. If retirement is a bridge to be crossed when we get there, then we must accept whatever lies ahead of us. If it is one we must build, then let us begin. Georgetown, Pitt, 
doesn't matter what the adversity has been today, whether it's Montego Cummings early foul trouble or Blount here in the second half, hasn't seemed to matter. Today's Big East Conference game, a copyrighted telecast of Creative Sports Incorporated. Any use of the pictures, descriptions, or accounts of today's broadcast at the express prior written consent of Creative Sports is prohibited. I don't think any Georgetown fans would want to replay this one. No. <laughs> Hasn't been pretty for the Hoyas. Jason Mayle comes circling out. 19-point lead for Pitt with just over 10 minutes left. Victor Page has 18 for the Hoyas. Been great balance for Georgetown. Cummings, Taylor, and Mayle, along with Varga, all having very good days. Oh, that's a bad play by Mayle. You don't want to start turning the ball over. That can get them back in the game. Page with a stuffer. 20 for Victor. It, for the most part, has been very good with the basketball. Very few turnovers. Willard gave up the thought of three, looked inside for Isaac Hawkins, and father tells son, nice look. Boy, it was. I think that kind of surprised Hawkins. He looks like he's going to take the three, then dish it quickly. He was able to get his hands on it and get fouled. Owingi with a foul, his first, third on Georgetown. 9.46 left now. 17 point Panther lead. Jason Mayo, he has 16 points today. Season high was 29 against Maryland earlier this year. Hoyas need to stop right here. Every time down the floor, they got to tighten up their D and stop Pitt from getting these good opportunities. There's enough time, but it's got to start on this end of the court for the Hoyas, and it does. Owingi with a steal. Three on two break. Page right by Willard with a floater. Oh, what a tough shot by Page. Two turnovers. I think Pitt has got to stop this game here. Get get themselves back into the same frame of mind it got him this lead 22 for victor page the lead is 15 and von tigo cummings he looked very confident handling the ball against damon jackson who picked up his third foul now off of the turnovers they're pushing the ball up watch victor page look crossover and now as he's floating out of bounds he throws up that delicate eight footer. That was a great play by him. Yeah, Victor Page having a 22 point afternoon. His Hoyas are down by 15. Now next Saturday afternoon, a noontime shootout and a rematch. Villanova looking to return the favor and win at the Carrier Dome. Earlier this year, the Orange won in Philadelphia. And at two, your second leg of the doubleheader. Pitt at West Virginia from Morgantown. Check your local listings. And happy to have you with us today. Eric Reed with Kevin Grevy. You know, Victor Page has 22. He's averaging 22. Could become just the fourth boy in John Thompson's 25 years to average 20 or more a game. Iverson did it the last two years. Lonzo Mourning did it back in 1992. And Reggie Williams averaged 23 again for Georgetown back in 1987. Well, that's incredible. I have some great players through that period of time. Foul on Georgetown. And it is against Ed Sheffy. That's the second on the point guard. 15 foul on the Hoyas. Well, if you change your opinion on whether Georgetown can come back, they're down 15 with 8.43 left. They have scored the last four. Well, they certainly have the time, but Pittsburgh's going to have to help them by turning the ball over. Kevin Willard, big running jumper for him. Boy, has he played great floor game or what? Coming off the bench, he has had a couple turnovers to allow Pittsburgh to falter, but he's doing great. Reese Gibson can't buy a bucket. He had the open shot. Kevin Willard, that was just his second field goal attempt a moment ago. But he's got two points and the five assists. And Pitt's lead is 17 with just over eight minutes left. You know, last year when Pitt was in his position, they would allow teams to get back into the game. They wouldn't oh, keep short and flipping him up. I mean, they had a miserable finish to games last year. I saw a game against Rutgers where they had a 26-point lead with about nine minutes left and lost. I think this team has grown up and learned from that, and they're playing with the same focus that got him this lead. Very intense ball club. 
and Ralph Willard's ball club is starting to grow up. If they get a win here in Landover, that is huge. Now they've been a young club. Uh, their coaching staff telling us we haven't let our freshmen be freshmen. They've been thrown right into the fray, and Victor Page lighting it up now. He's got 25, another triple for Victor. Three three-pointers in the game for Victor Page. And a heads-up play by Kevin Willard. Got trapped, called a timeout. I think it's going to be a 20. No, Pitt takes the 22nd timeout. They lead it 72 to 56 with 7.33 left. Uh, John Thompson's Hoyas. This is one of their uh, biggest struggles ever in the Big East. Got to go back a long way. Matter of fact, the Hoyas last below 500 season in the Big East game four years ago. They were 8 and 10 in the league, won 20 games overall, and that was their last visit to the NIT. A place they may be heading back to because they've got a tough schedule upcoming. They host Villanova Monday, Kevin. Then five of their seven Big East games left are on the road. Except it's so, you just can't predict anything in the Big East this year. There's just so much balance. There's so much parity. Anybody can win on a given night. Now you call the Big East the Big Even this year. <laughs> That's true. Cummings miss, followed up by Gerald Jordan. That's just great play by Jordan. Got a couple putbacks here to hold off the Hoyas. Jordan oh. eight, that won't count. Gerald Jordan joined the charge. So put it on his account, Victor Page picks up his third foul. But what an individual effort by Page to try to get this ball up. He just shows his strength and his determination. Great defense to pick up that charge. A right, great depth by Pittsburgh today. Blount goes out with the in, uh, with a foul trouble, and Jordan steps up big. We got a timeout here in Landover. Everyone loves to shoot the basketball, but there's only one right way. That's why former NBA All-Star and NCAA coach Jeff Mullins is introducing the right way basketball, the ball with a built-in coach. For the first time ever, you can own this complete 10-step shooting program. It includes a durable patented basketball, the Jeff Mullins Secrets of Shooting video, and a 10-step shooting poster, all for only $34.95. That's less than you'd pay for a one-hour private lesson. Why would any young player or coach be without a right way basketball? So why wait? Just call 1-800-425-0811 to order yours today. Big East Basketball on Sports Channel is brought to you in part by your local Chrysler Plymouth dealers. From the people who brought you one clever idea after another comes the Plymouth Voyager Plus sale. Right now you can get a Plymouth Voyager Plus, this great limited time lease offer for only $2.49 a month. You get air conditioning, seven passenger seating, and more and you get it for only $2.49 a month. Don't miss the Plymouth Voyager Plus sale. Another clever way to save. And it's only at your Plymouth dealer. This tank of gas brought to you by National Car Rental. Pittsburgh having a banner day here in Landover, Maryland. I want to tell you, they have shot 13 of 18, 72% in the second half. We wondered if the Panthers would be able to keep it up. They've taken their 52% shooting at halftime and raised it to 59%. Well, it's just been outstanding performance. They've just been sizzling from the field. Their defense has been remarkable. They've just done everything. They have just tore this ball club apart. I can't remember the last time I've seen an opponent come in here to US Air Arena where the Hoyas have won 84% of their games and gotten beat this handle. Kelly Taylor, Varga trying to get the rebound and Yaya Ja over his back for the foul. It's the second of the Georgetown captain. They'll talk about balance. Four and double figures for Pitt. Montego Cummings with 15. He's made six of eight shots. Jason Mayo has 14 with four triples. Chad Varga, 14, five boards. And Kelly Taylor, best of the lot. 13 points, nine boards, six assists, and three steals. That is unbelievable numbers for a point guard, a little guard like Kevin Kelly Taylor. What a game. Bernard Long out. And uh, now Reese Gibson also checks out. Jahidi White and Ed Sheffy return for Georgetown. Tuomu also leaving the game. 
for the Hoyas. This is a, a critical game for Georgetown. They came into this one a game under 500 in the Big East. A pit win today would put both teams at four and five. Actually, uh, Pitt will go to four and four in the Big East if they win it. And Georgetown would drop to four and six in the league should they not launch a miracle comeback. Just six and a half minutes left, and they're down by 19. All thrown behind Varga and taken by Damon Jackson. Jahidi White, nice little pivot inside by the big man. Boy, it was. Clear a little space for him. He gets a big man of Jordan. Seven points for White and a hold by White down at the other end. What you're talking about it. Mark Blount went out with his with some foul trouble four minutes into the second half. They really haven't missed him. Blount, uh, Blount's back up. Jordan has stepped forward well. That's right. The uh, version of Twin Towers here for Pittsburgh. Those two guys, big, lanky. They're able to really do a good job defensively and collectively. They're putting up some pretty good numbers inside for Pitt. Jordan with nine points and five rebounds. A transfer from Morgan State. There's Blount blowing a few bubbles. Yeah, he's relaxed. Why not? Up by 18, 6 11 left. You saw this guy play at Morgan State. Had a terrific freshman year there before transferring to Pitt. Oh, I did. I thought this guy was going to be a star. And then he transferred to Pitt. Struggled early, but he's really blossomed to a fine player. It's improving every game. He's got a nice soft touch, George does. We're down to West Philadelphia High School. Shot. Nice finish, one bounce, the lay-in for Yaya. Five in the second half for Ja. Twelve with nine rebounds on the day. Hit by 16. They don't want to get careless here with 5.45 to go. Oh. Mail squares. Oh, the tip in by Jordan. Oh, he's a big tipper and having a big second half. His job on the boards, on the glass, has just been huge here in the second half. When Pitt has missed, he's been there to put it back up. And Georgetown just can't get back in the game when that keeps happening. Harold Jordan with four offensive rebounds today. Also has 11 points. What a strip by Kelly Taylor. Unbelievable. Oh, he's having a terrific day. The pull up. Why not? That might have been a little quick. Here comes Victor Page. He always does things quickly and dynamically. Victor Page, two more. What? 27 for Page. Page going for his third straight over 30 points. Victor's already pierced the 30 point mark five times this year. Actually, four times this year. Yeah, Victor's a score machine. Montego Cummings, set back by White, but a foul. And it's a very good look by the big man. They sort of inverted their offense that time, Pitt did. Take the big guys out, bring the little guys down, and it really worked. Here's Jordan finding his point guard. He'll get two free throws. Victor Page picked up his fourth foul. David Jackson goes to the bench. Jannard Long and Tuomu both back in the game for Georgetown. And Vontigo Cummings will go to the line. Vontigo with 15 points today. Well, I tell you, it's hard to pick an MVP of this Pittsburgh team because they've all played well, collectively, have played within themselves. Whatever their role is, they have magnified it here and have really put on a great performance here in Lando. Uh, but a very pleasant afternoon for Ralph Willard. Cummings has had some big games. 29 against Miami. He had 27 at St. John's. All right, averaging 17 points a game over his last nine games in spite of that three-point outing. Right, Page will take his share of threes, but he loves to get it right to the rim. Oh, he does. He's always trying to draw fouls. Gets to the free throw line quite a bit. He played 10 years in the NBA. Do you see Victor playing at the next level at oh, some point? Sure he can. He's got all the gifts. Very talented, great legs, good handle. I'm just not sure what position he would play. Point or two. Oh, that was chipped by White. I think that ball was in the cylinder there. He should have left that one alone and got away with one. Nine points for Jahidi White. Well, I'd say Page likely to be a two guard in the NBA. Well, he certainly has the two guard instincts of firing it up there. I'm just curious about his size, 6'2", 6'3". But there's no doubt about it. He's got all the ingredients to be a pro. He has definitely emerged from Allen Iverson's shadow of a year ago. Under four minutes to play in this one. Panthers by 15. 
Blount back in, but he coughed that one up. But Cummings right there for oh, the recovery. Oh, he just got tackled. The takedown by Tuomo. And a foul. And Tuomo's hurt. I think something's wrong. No, he's okay. Just frustrated. I think like all his teammates are. Because they just been taken apart by Pittsburgh. He looking up at that board, can't believe it. 79, the 64 Panthers. 347 left. I'll tell you what, Cummings and Taylor right from the opening bell today set the table for Pitt, didn't they, Kevin? They really did. I think they set the tone in this game right off the get-go with their steals, their defense, shutting down Victor Page in the first six, seven minutes. Just got them the lead. They took a 20 to 5 lead and have not looked back since. Montego Cummings averaging 15 a game. Has 17 to go. Varga battling for the rebound. He'll jump it up. Possession arrow says it stays with Pitt. So the ball stays with Pitt. So does the lead. A game they have never trailed. Remember, they started off with a 10 to 3 first. Got a 16 point lead as we head toward the. There is a prison from which it is all but impossible to escape. Because every day that we choose to consume instead of save, we let something slip away. Investing is not just about stocks or bonds or annuities. It's about freedom. Sports News Network. Yeah, sure. Scores, highlights, breaking news. Who cares? Big deal. People act like this is a second coming or something. People say, are you going to be on ESPN News? Nope. No way. Apparently, I don't fit into their little schedule. I need a new agent. Back in Landover with the Panthers leading big. This could be a huge day for them. They're up 80 to 64 with 3.45 to go. Let's take a look at our Pizza Hut making it great plays of the game. Oh, I'm looking forward to this. Wow. He took that one over. Yeah, yeah. That dunk had a little testosterone on it. Watch. And then came right back with a beautiful jumper. And like Chad Varga, Pizza Hut is making it great again and again. A little from the outside, but that smash over Ja, I think our play of the day. Yeah, that just took all the air out of the sail of Georgia. They thought about coming back. That ended it with Varga's inspirational play. How about this guy, Kelly Taylor, with a little dish, and uh, <laughs> Heidi White saying you had one, yeah. Chad Varga, not another. Hey, what a move. Oh, Victor Page. Did you see that? He went behind his back, and then came back across with his left. That was unbelievable. That's worth a second look, too. 29 points for Victor Page. Nobody does it better in the Big East than Georgetown sophomore two guard. 14-point lead for Pitt, three minutes to go. Jason Mayo. Oh, you can't leave him open. Never. Rattles down another triple. Come on, it's like horse out here. Five for seven from three-point land. Jason Air Mail. And what a ball game he's having. Mail has 17. What on the turn. Right off glass. Boy, I tell you, White has shown me some nice offensive moves in here. Victor Page has been unbelievable. But you just got two, three guys. Yeah, yeah. We need to play as a complete team if Georgetown is going to have anything going. Antico Cummings hasn't missed much today. And when he has, he's been able to retrieve them. 15 point pit lead down to 210 left. Cummings to the lane. Blount. Oh, man. Way back. <laughs> and then a little stare. Be careful, Mark. Watch this dunk. Power, 
the foul. Ball slipped in, and then he decided to give a little bit of look here. El Heidi White picking up his fourth foul, then a little chest bump from the slender seven-footer. Yep, yep. Gave it up about 50 pounds to White. Now Kelly Taylor, what else is new? His 10th rebound of the game. What a terrific day he's had. 13 points, 10 boards, 6 assists, and 4 steals. You talk about filling up the stat book. Boy, he is a stat steal stuffer there. And then he went right in between White and Yaya to snatch that. Most impressive rebound of the bunch. Six players in double figures for Pitt. They've had some good wins this year, but this got to rank right near the top. Travel on by Tico Cummings. The right. question, I guess, to ask Ralph Willard, can this win catapult Pitt to a strong finish in the conference this year? I would think so. As far as winning on the road, it's always big. But then to finally get a win that you've never been able to get here at U.S. Air Arena, even when Yaya has a good game. In fact, they have won once before, one in 11 on this home court. But just the same, this is a great win. 14 for Ja. Nice little jump hook. Kelly Taylor pushed by Victor Page. And that'll do it. Victor Page fouls out. So Page fouls out of the game with 29 points. And I believe this is the first time this year that Victor Page has fouled out. By the way, this is the most points that Georgetown has allowed in a game this year. They had previously given up 81 and a loss at Boston College, but 85 for Pitt here. That's quite an accomplishment for Ralph Willard's group. Oh, it really is. They shot the ball so, so well, have done everything they needed to do to pull out this win. And it's just not one or two guys. It's been the entire team, and they deserve to be happy. And John Thompson has been frustrated. His frustration showed the other day when they lost at Miami. Three in the morning, they landed. And then they practice. Yeah, they watch. They watch film. Then they went over some plays, and then they scrimmage. And that practice didn't end until five in the morning. Well, Pitt's best offensive game of the year here in Landover, Maryland. And Kelly Taylor, what a terrific game he's played. 15 points, 10 boards, six assists, four steals. Jordan with a rebound. Jordan has done in the second half. Lamar Blanc got in his foul trouble. Seven boards for Jordan. Another guy coming back from injury. I'll tell you what, Pitt, a team you do not want to face in that first round of the Big East tournament. Heck no. This guy can coach. Ralph Willard has got a ball club. Man. Now, first two years, Ralph Willard winning 10 games in each season. This will be his 10th win of this season. Pitt will move to 500 in the Big East as Jordan comes up with a block. With the win today, Pitt will go to 4-4 four and four in league play. This will be their first road win in the conference after losses at Boston College, St. John's, and Seton Hall. But for Georgetown, this will be their fourth loss in the last five games, and they will fall two games under the 500 mark. Those are your standings at the start of the day. And hard to believe it that Georgetown would be two under 500 the same year that Miami would be three above the 500 mark. Yeah, this has really been a strange twist this season, seeing the Hoya start to suffer and Miami surge. Gary Nichols hitting the first free throw. Vontigo Cummings just coming out of the game for Pittsburgh. Great afternoon for Vontigo with 17. Chad Vargas sits down. He had 15, including the thunder slam on Yaya Ja. A game that Pitt can build from, and a game that Georgetown must rebound from. Rebound down to Leon Murray. Pitt will host Notre Dame on Wednesday, then road games at West Virginia and Miami. Straight ahead for them. Georgetown will host going over here on Monday night. Leon Murray with a little flipper. Everything's going right. Even the guys at the end of the bench getting in there and getting in the box score. What do you see ahead for John Thompson's Hoyas, Kevin? Can they get this thing straightened out? But until they can find somebody else to score other than Victor Page, it's going to be like this this season. 
they're just too predictable and too easy to defend. You just pack it in, play a 2-3 zone, and that's all it is for. Now Georgetown's gone to the tournament 22 years in a row. They'll have to play better than this to get to the postseason this year. Pitt with a great road win. Hats off to Ralph Willard and the Panthers. They win it by 18. Great balance for Pittsburgh on the road today. Today's Big East telecast has been brought to you by Nissan, who reminds you that life is a journey. Enjoy the ride. Thank you for calling the Scudder Funds. Investor information. This is Eric Bjornsson. Eric Bjornsson, the football player? <laughs> no, I, I don't play football. I just work for Scudder. Uh-huh. So, is, is there something I can help you with? Yeah, I'm sorry. I was wondering if you could send me some information about a greater Europe growth fund. You understand the Greater Europe Growth Fund is, is a fairly risky portfolio. No commission, no sales right. pressure. Talk to us before you invest. Call 1 800 SCUDDER. I think real estate would be highly lucrative. Now there's a computer that puts you in touch with the world like never before. You're the one. At the touch of a button, you get TV, FM stereo, even a digital answering machine. Hey, Doug, this is Donald Trump. Just got your email. The Toshiba Infinia with the Intel Pentium processor. When you're ready for a different computer. Third Big East loss at home for Georgetown and Pitt's 10th win of the year. Their best performance this season. Hope you enjoyed it. Along with Kevin Grevy, this is Eric Reed. Again, your final score, Pitt 89, Georgetown 71. The proceeding has been a presentation of Creative Sports. Continental Airlines, the highest ranked airline for flights 500 miles and more in the 1996 frequent flyer J.D. Power & Associates study. Continental Airlines, more airline for your money. For a car that costs $4,400 less than Toyota Camry LE, Mitsubishi Galant stacks up pretty well. I compared, and Galant has more power. More horsepower. Galant is roomier. More front head and leg room combined. And Galant has a better warranty. Longer overall warranty protection for your peace of mind. All this for $4,400 less. You're not still thinking about a Camry, are you? Get that good deal feeling. Right now, Mitsubishi. Built for living in the tri-state area. Saturday, January 25th, 8 a.m. to 11 p.m. It's the one and only one-day sale at Nobody Beats the Wiz. Absolutely every item in every Nobody Beats the Wiz store is on sale. No ifs, ands, or buts. Every TV, camcorder, audio component, compact disc, computer, telephone, and camera. Everything. And here's the Nobody Beats the Wiz challenge. If it's not on sale Saturday, it's yours free. This Saturday, our one and only one-day sale. Nobody Beats the Wiz. Special preview day Friday. That's nothing. Ain't no doubt about the power of two. Check this out. Get vertical, vertical, with the power of deal. Get vertical. With the power of two. Big East Basketball on Sports Channel has been brought to you by the Greater New York Pepsi-Cola Bottlers. Remember, nothing else is a Pepsi. And by Nobody Beats the Wiz. For state-of-the-art home electronics, computers, cameras, music, movies, and more, Nobody Beats the Wiz.